What is the mission of the church? Well, to answer that question, I think we first need to consider what is the church? Church is not this building that we're in. The church are a people called out of society by God in order to accomplish a very specific purpose, God's purpose. We can read in Matthew 16, 18, that Christ told us that he would build his church. He says, I will build my church. Further, we're told that Christ is the head of that church in Ephesians 1 and verse 22 and Ephesians 4 and verse 15. Christ established this while he was on earth, teaching his disciples what they should do after he would be crucified and resurrected. But he also gave those disciples and his followers that would become his church a very specific job. Well, a couple different jobs. And that is what the mission of the church is. We're told this in Matthew 28, 19 and 20, a scripture that is certainly familiar to a lot of us. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I've commanded. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So one of the jobs was to go and teach to make disciples, just as he did. Additionally, in Mark 16 and 15, we read that he told them to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Additionally, he told us in Matthew 24, 14, that the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations and then the end will come. I think that clarification on that scripture, that the gospel will be preached to the entire world, and then the end will come, tells us that that gospel needs to be preached until he returns. That that would be part of the mission of the church throughout time, to preach his message. To teach and to preach. But what is the gospel? If we know we are to teach it, we are to preach it, we need to know what it is. Well, simply, Jesus Christ's message was the gospel of the kingdom of God. Gospel comes from a Greek word that means good news. Now, our entire world certainly suffers from being under the influence of Satan, the destructive power of his ways can be seen all around us, and eventually that will bring humanity on the brink of self-destruction. But Christ tells us that he will stop that from happening and he will save everyone from that destruction, removing Satan and setting up the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God will bring prosperity, health, and good relationships that everyone longs for. That's the good news. That's the gospel of the kingdom of God. The church is given the responsibility and the privilege of bringing that message to the entire world. It's the best news, the best message that anyone could ever deliver. Now, will everyone respond to that message? Unfortunately, no. Not in this life, at least. Most have not, and most will not, until they're given another opportunity. But does that mean that the church has failed in that part of the mission that Christ gave us? If the purpose of the church was to turn everyone from Satan and to Christ, you could only conclude that the church has miserably failed. 
even if the definition of turning someone to Christ was just that they heard the word Jesus to be saved, as some say, only a fraction of the world would still have been considered saved. The biblical truth is that only God can call people to his church. And he has a plan to do that in stages at the right time for each person. Christ told us that no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. That was in John 6, 44. And we're told more about this, these stages, the timing of salvation for people in 1 Corinthians 15, 23 where it says, but each one in his own order, Christ, the first fruits, afterward, those who are Christ at his coming. So those stages of salvation are for people even after they've already died. We can see these stages of God, in God's plan for everyone to come to salvation through his festivals. So God's plan includes offering salvation to people even after they've died, and he's had to come and resurrect them from the dead. That doesn't mean that the church's commission should be minimized, that we should not focus on preaching the gospel of the kingdom as Christ instructed us. We don't know how many people God will call during their lifetime, their physical lifetime. So we must keep bringing his message that good news that we all hopefully cherish to as many people as we can. So how are we doing? I have some experience in this. I don't know if everyone that's here knows this, but um, in January of 2011, Brian and Marianne Hegvold and myself were introduced to Cagua's interim administration team at the time, and they wanted to see if we could help um, because our company, 30 Degrees North, um, built out websites and did marketing act activities, and so they wanted to see if we could help build Cagua's internet presence. Initially, like everyone else at that time that worked for Cagua, we were just volunteers trying to help out and get a bootstrapped organization off the ground. But once the permanent administration team was in place, Mr. Clyde, Mr. Clyde Kylo uh, contracted with us to help build the Cogwa's websites, including Life, Hope, and Truth. That was over 10 years ago now. Today, I work directly with Mr. Kylo and the rest of the media team to not only build and maintain Cogwa's internet's presence, but also to help advise and direct their initiatives to further preaching of the gospel. For myself and the rest of, of our team that has worked on Cogwa's projects, Brian and Marianne, as I mentioned, Aaron Ash and Lindsay Gutierrez, I can say that it certainly is an exciting and a privilege to work with the church and to be involved behind the scenes in making Christ's message available to so many. So I asked today if I could have a little bit of extra time to be able to talk to you more about what those efforts are producing and how things have really, really taken a big leap here in the last year. And I found out a couple weeks ago that um, Mr. Kylo was also planning to do the same thing during an accord this week, which I think is a good compliment. If you haven't seen that already, I recommend you watch it. It's the February 23rd, 2023 edition of In Accord, where he goes through a lot of some of the same material, but I feel like this will be a good compliment to that. So Cogwa decided early on that our focus on preaching the gospel was going to primarily be through the internet, which was a wise choice for an organization starting up not having a ton of resources, because that would probably be the most effective and least expensive way to do that. So their primary vehicle is Life, Hope, and Truth, the website. And that website now is, like I said, is over 10 years old. It's available in three different languages, in English, Spanish, and French. And last year, the English site reached over 5 million people, the Spanish site around 2 million, and the French site around 400,000. The English site gets around 15 to 20,000 visitors every single day. 
which gives me a little anxiety as far as being the one that's responsible to make sure it's there for them, but that's, that's wonderful. The Spanish site gets around 2,000 visitors per day. And at any given time, we have real-time stats on what happens on the website. At any given time, there's around 100 people on that website browsing and looking for information. And last year, we would receive around 1,200 to 1,400 new contacts every single month that would sign up for our booklets or subscriptions to different material. So starting about a year ago, Mr. Kylo, um, as part of his plan for 2022, came up with a variety of different, very specific projects that would take the, the preaching of the gospel further, for, um, at least for Cagua's efforts. This would be kind of a focused um, plan for, in some key areas for uh, being able to further preach the gospel. And those included advertising, increasing discerned subscribers, reaching out to more people that already have made contact with this so we can better further their, their religious information and maybe their conversion. Um, starting podcast, enhancing our website's visibility in online search engines and developing video programs. I wanna tell you a little bit more about one of those programs that I've, I've been heavily involved in, and that is on the course of advertising. Specifically, social media advertising. So many of us use social media, and you've certainly seen ads if you've used social media because that's how they work. Um, but you may not fully understand exactly how, those, how it works and how the church may be using that to further the preaching of the gospel. Social media advertising is very highly targeted, or at least it can be, and therefore it can be very effective. You can go the route of just doing Maybe think about it like traditional advertising, a sense of like, well, I want to advertise to people in Houston who own a house because I sell AC services. That's kind of some geographic and some demographic type, type information that you may have. You may also go around like with social media, that, you know, people's gender and their age and their interest. So you could go and say like, well, I want to advertise to people that are interested in the Bible that live in the United States or certain countries. So you can do that, but it's still very broad and not very targeted. We've done this before, and we, we experimented with this several years ago, and it wasn't very effective. Um, there wasn't, the costs were quite high in that way. But this time, uh, like I said, starting about last year and through the summer of last year, we developed a plan to use a different way of advertising on social media that involved the concept of what, what is considered a look-alike audience. And so what that means is that instead of us trying to determine the demographic information for our audience that we want to advertise to, we let Facebook figure that out based upon other people that have shown similar interest. So think of it like this. If everyone in this room, let's say I know 10 of you that are really into gardening, and I, you've, you've shown interest in gardening, I think you know, you, maybe I sell garden products. And so, I, I know who you are, and I tell Facebook, hey, I've got this list of people, and they all like gardening. And they very likely, if they're involved with social media, have, maybe they're in gardening groups, or they've looked up gardening or searched for gardening. Maybe they post pictures of their garden. And so Facebook knows lots about you, if you didn't know that already. <laughs> they have hundreds of different points of criteria they use for determining what you like and who you are. So if, there's, if this is our audience, and I know 10 of you like gardening, there's probably at least 10 more of you that also like gardening, but I may not know that. But Facebook may know that. So I can tell it, here's my 10, go find me 10 more. And so they do that through, again, all the profile information that they have. So it can be a very, very effective and highly targeted way of advertising in a good way in that you're giving information to people that very well may be interested in it. If you're not into gardening and you've never posted about gardening or never done anything with gardening, you may not care if you get a gardening ad because it's not relevant to you. So we can do the same thing with our material, and we have. So we started with the Revelation booklet. Uh, up until this, the, before we started the, 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 uh, the campaign, we had downloaded, about 20,000 people had downloaded that booklet over the course of probably seven or eight years. And so we're able to give that information to Facebook they try to match it up with people that they know about, and then they show the ad to those individuals. 
And it's interesting because it's great because it, it continuously improves as we get more people that download it either through results of the ad or they just found our website through a search engine. Um, it continuously puts them into that pool and it learns who likes this and who doesn't. And so it gets to be very targeted and very much effective. So we started this in the middle of September with a fairly modest budget. In the last couple weeks of September, our ad reached about 100,000 people. The great thing about this is that Facebook learns and optimizes the ad based upon the results of what it's, what's it seeing. So it, it tests things out, and then it may say, okay, well, this one's, it's working here, so let's funnel more of your budget to that, that area or, or that, um, those interests, people with those interests, which can be good, but it also can be not so good. It may do things you don't realize, which we found out. So originally we had a single budget for the entire ad and we were targeting a good portion of the world. We were targeting what's considered Oceania, which think of like the Pacific, essentially like Pacific Islands and Australia and that kind of area. And we were targeting North America. Well, turned out our ad did really well in two very small areas of the world, remote areas of Papua New Guinea and Fiji. Out of those 100,000 people, we reached 74,000 people in Papua New Guinea and Fiji, which is great. It was, it found out like it's very inexpensive to advertise there. So it just was like, I'm going to get you the most results I can. And so it put everything into those two countries, which isn't really what we wanted. So we figured we needed to make change, which is good because with this kind of a program, we could make a change very quickly to be able to make those adjustments so that we didn't, we didn't have to wait for months and months to see results of cards coming back from Fiji to learn that all of our advertising in Fiji was working. Um, we are able to split the budget into specific categories and regions so that we can you know, spread the wealth, so to speak, with our message. So we've been running that since, like I guess, the middle of September. And that one revelation campaign, we have reached over 2.4 million people. That's resulted in 39,000 people receiving our Revelation booklet at an average cost of 71 cents per booklet, which is very, very extremely, put any adjective you want in front of it, low. Uh, this ad is running currently in North America, the Caribbean, Europe, South Africa, the Philippines, Australia, and New Zealand. And we've really accelerated things here at the beginning of this year when we had a new budget year and they've, the church has decided to invest more into advertising and we're able to increase our budget in January such that we've been able to reach 1.3 million people just in the last 30 days. Now, not everybody downloads the booklet, of course, but, but that's how many people are seeing the ads that we're, we're, that we're running. In some areas, our budget goes a lot further. In the last 30 days in South Africa, we've reached 259,000 people, and 3,600 have received the Revelation booklet. And each of those downloads only cost us 33 cents. Now, I was trying to remember back in the days when we would hear reports of booklets and phone calls and TV programs, and I remember it was pretty much in the like close to $10 range, seven, eight, nine dollars per new subscriber that we would get. So this is a very tiny fraction of that that we're able to deliver and to be able to do it at a tremendous scale. The Philippines is another region that is showing really good response. In the last 30 days, we've reached 645,000 people, and there's been 3,100 that have downloaded the booklet for a cost of 39 cents per download. Even in the US, our cost is only 80 cents per new contact downloading the Revelation booklet. Like I said, we're in a lot of different areas of the world right now, and it's interesting to see where you're getting responses from. One that's, I think, a bit sobering is that in the Ukraine, over 50% of the people that see our ad are downloading the booklet, which is a tremendous conversion rate, and that's what we call it in the industry, of how many people see the ad to download it. But you can only imagine with their situation right now in the last two years, why they're interested in the end times. 
This, of course, also has a ripple effect because we have a lot more to offer than just the Revelation booklet. Currently, we're adding about 3,500 new contacts per week. That's triple of what we were getting last year uh, when I mentioned that last year we would get around 12 to 1,400 um, per month, or no, per week. We're now able to offer those individuals other material, and we're seeing them responding from that. So we have you know, many other booklets. We have subscriptions. We're seeing lots of new subscribers to discern, things where we can con continuously keep, up and keep, um, keep in contact with them. We're wanting to stay more in contact with, our, with those that are responding and offer them encouragement. And we're doing that through a weekly email that's written by one of our pastors, Tom Clark, in Arkansas, and that's going out to around 80,000 people, and it's growing each week. Like I said, about 3,000 per week, that is, that's growing. We have another campaign that I'm not going to go into today, but Mr. Kylo does mention it in, in Accord for the Change Booklet that is also doing quite well. I want to put this into a little bit of perspective because you hear hundreds of thousands and millions and this many downloads, but you know, right now, all the booklets combined that church, the church is producing and offering results in around 4,600 downloads per week. Now, I looked at it and I tried to come up with the best I could, but I think you could say on, in the best case scenario, in the United States, Cogwa probably has maybe around 40, four to 5,000 people a week attending Sabbath services. That means that like, think of our entire church congregation all, all across the country downloading a booklet every single week and new, a new group every single week pretty much. That's pretty incredible to think about as far as spreading that good news. LHT gets around 16,000 new visitors every single day. In 2022, the feast attendance for Cagua around the entire world was only 12,000 people. That's pretty amazing to think about, that that's how many new people every single day are hopefully getting something of, of a message that they've never heard before. It's remarkable to see what God is able to do with a little flock. Christ gave the church the mission to take his message to the world, that good news of the kingdom of God. And Kagwa is doing that. We live in a time like no other where it's fairly easy to take his message to anyone in the world, especially when you think, you know, compare that to just the recent past. I mean, even within the last five years, some of the infrastructure that's in place in some of the most remote regions with cellular networks now and people having smartphones, those that never had internet access, never had a computer before, you know, even within the last five years, there's been tremendous gains in internet connectivity through, through cellular and through smartphones where we can reach more and more people. Our efforts are certainly being blessed, and I hope we're all encouraged to see Christ's message the gospel of the kingdom reach more people.